following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, September 27th, 2022, featuring Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Training at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Sam Rines of Arbor Data Science. Welcome, Sam. Hey, Kristen. Good to see you. We're anxious to hear today your rundown on social media and when unicorns crash. By definition, unicorns are those that reach a valuation of a billion dollars without being listed on the stock market and are the dream of any tech startup. Sam, what role has social media played and what has been the impact? So it's, it's really interesting, right? You, you kind of look at the U.S., you look at kind of the valuation of unicorns. You know, it, it's a unique phenomenon in a way. Uh, and part of it is that you have so many people using it, right? Social media is a dominant force in our lives when you have 90-ish percent of younger people using some form of social media, that's a big deal, right? If you wanna be in front of their eyeballs, you have to be on social media. Um, and, you know, basically it's been adopted by every age group just at different pace. Uh, you know, the older generations might not have adopted it like uh, the millennials and Zoomers, but guess what? You know, they're still on there and you still have to go find them. Uh, if you're an advertiser, you know, you can't just you know, print an advertisement in a newspaper, nobody's reading those anymore. And if they are, they're probably reading them on Facebook or Twitter. And, you know, the, you know, you have to be where the people are. Uh, so I think to a certain degree, what social media has done is really kind of refocus the eyeballs of individuals uh, and created a market uh, for these unicorns, right? If you're a really interesting tech startup, you know, you're telling everybody our exit strategy is to sell to Facebook or sell to Google or, you know, Snapchat might be interested in our filters, you know, something along those lines. So it's it's a it's a self-reinforcing mechanism to a degree. And what's the appeal of YouTube across generations? Oh, it's, this is one of the my favorite uh, topics. It, the one thing that people kind of miss is YouTube has the ability to kind of search and you just get to watch whatever videos you want. If you want to watch, you know, a video of a unicorn like my daughter, guess what? You can find everything on there unicorn-esque, trust me. Uh, if you want to watch uh, the Rolling Stones concert from you know, your heyday, guess what? You can find it on there. Uh, if you want to find a clip about uh, military exercises, if you want to find whatever, uh, you can do it. And that's really, I think, what draws in a number of different generations is you don't have to look at the comments. You can just watch a video and you can watch a video of anything, right? It's not, you know, you can watch everything from Elvis to uh, a video of Madonna, right? It's, it's a, it spans all generations. What sectors have the most unicorns? Uh, this is this is great, right? Because it changes, right? It changes with uh, the market that we're in. Uh, so if you look at COVID, what did we need during COVID? We needed services and we needed a way to pay for them and we needed a way to do it from our couches. Uh, so you had uh, people trying to figure out how to do that. You, know, you had a significant amount of uh, fintech startups that became unicorns because you had, again, an exit strategy where PayPal was going to buy you. you know, if you were Venmo, guess what? You had an exit strategy or Stripe was going to buy you. Whoever it was, you had the ability to call it call an exit so you get a higher valuation uh, and you had a huge tailwind from COVID that nobody saw coming. Uh, if you, you needed to buy a service at home, you need both the service to be delivered to you but also the payments. Uh, so you had internet software and services search and you had the ability to pay for those services search. Uh, so it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, the one thing that I think was kind of interesting was you didn't see a surge in the number of health uh, tech startups. I, I thought that might that that was kind of a curious uh, data point here. During COVID, you would have thought that uh, health services from home would have surged. Uh, apparently, it didn't. And who dominates the unicorn market? Oh, it's the U.S. by a mile. And again, it's because to a certain degree, the U.S. had or has the exits. Uh, so if you want to uh, 
if you want to be, you know, build the next startup for Google to buy, you probably want to do it in the U.S. Uh, because that's the best market to do, to do it in. You have an incredible amount of talent in the tech industry sitting here, and you have a very large market for your tech to begin with. Uh, you know, you, you know, China, you know, has a number of unicorns, or did. India has a few unicorns. Those are very large domestic markets again. But if you want the best place to be a tech startup, you basically have to be in the U.S. because, you know, your exit strategy is probably Facebook, Amazon, Google, it's Netflix, who knows what it might be. But if you're if you're looking to build a tech startup, you either have to do it in the U.S. or you have a long slog ahead of you. Let's take a look at valuations. Is the Fed tightening driving valuations off their peak and has the COVID era boom started to wane? Wow, this is this is kind of this is kind of a two part question, and I love it because it's both, right? The Fed tightening is restricting the amount of money that's flowing into unprofitable tech companies. There's no way around that. But it's also partly because guess what? We came out of COVID, and we don't need kind of the same thing that we needed during COVID. Uh, so I think you're kind of beginning to see a little bit of a normalization in the unicorn market, not necessarily something that is shocking or something that is problematic, but we're kind of back to where we should have been to begin with, right? You never probably should have seen that many companies with that high evaluation. Well, you probably should have been kind of where we are right now. Uh, you know, and not to mention entrepreneurship surged during COVID. Right. People kind of, I, I think, to a certain degree, uh, decided they were going to do what they loved. And if they could do it on their own and they could do it from the comfort of their house and uh, work from home, guess what they did? And I think part of that is also uh, beginning to wear off as the economy reopens. Let's talk about the job market in tech, as one might expect layoffs at this point in time. But is that the case? It's not the case. I mean, you had you've had a number of companies announce layoffs, uh, but you haven't actually had as many in the third quarter as you did in the second quarter. And we're almost done the third quarter, so there's not that much time left. Um, and so it's it's kind of a confounding situation, right? You would have expected that the Fed raising rates that you know you would have had a drying up in the number of tech jobs out there, but you really haven't seen the type of uh, pain that might have been anticipated at least yet. Um, this is not this is not the tech collapse of 2000 2001 uh, at least at the moment. Uh, could it become that at some future point? Maybe, uh, but you know people are still googling things. People are still on Facebook. People are still tweeting, uh, and, and you know kind of you. You kind of need people to engineer those products. Uh, so I would say you're probably more likely to see additional hiring freezes in a slower pace of growth within uh, tech employment. But at least up until the uh, up to now, you haven't quite seen the blood uh, in the streets, quote unquote, uh, that you would have expected uh, from startups laying people off. Sam, in summary today, what should we be watching for next? Uh, this is this is the fun part. Uh, I would say you really want to watch what's going on in the startup world of unicorns. Unicorns spend a lot of money advertising on the social media platforms, and those social media platforms are heavily reliant on that revenue uh, to grow. Uh, so as you begin to continue to see some of the slowing in hiring, some of the rhetoric out of the tech startup world, uh, valuations begin to go lower. Uh, potentially drying up of, call it B and C uh, type funding rounds, uh, you're going to potentially see a drawback in that advertising budget that's a little more substantial than people anticipate. That's going to blow back on big tech, and that's likely to see some margin compression, at least in the short term. Uh, I would be uh, really watching Snapchat. They tend to be the first one that people cut, uh, followed by Twitter. Uh, Facebook and Google tend to be the last advertising platforms that people cut simply because uh, they're pretty easy to track in terms of the revenue that you generate off of it and very, very large audiences. Uh, so kind of watch the, well, the smaller uh, social media firms for any indication of what's really going on on the ground in terms of uh, the unicorns and a potential unicorn crash. Sam, thank you for your thoughts today. This was very informative. We appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianca Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.